All right, it's time to do the water pump. So, this is the contents that are of our Evernerd kit. Uh, the instructions, LOL, is how I would describe them. Um, it basically is just a parts list. Let me show it to you. Yep, those are the instructions. So the key thing here, we have three different water tube grommets. So that would be two, three, four. And our parts list down here, it shows you which ones do what. So there's been a lot of talk about that being wrong. So I don't know if it's true or not, but we can look at what came out of there, compare it and replace it. Um, part number three, part number three, it's used for 20 inch 9.9, .9, 15 through 92, 15 inch 81 and newer, 15 inch 9.9, .9, two stroke 993 and newer. So I don't know. But it also says here, all 20, uh, anyway, so basically it says that'll work, that'll work, so we're going to go with that. And also the other advantage, that's what came out of there, so it makes me feel good. I don't know what was so hard from the factory to pre-install this, but the doesn't come pre-installed. I understand if it uses different size drive shaft for different horsepowers, but it doesn't, so in my opinion. Probably should have had that installed first, but anyway. So we're going to get that thing done and out of the way. We need to coat the exterior of it with the gasket sealing compound. Why, I do not know. Maybe to help it slide in, because this is a plastic housing and really kind of disposable when you're done with it, but whatever. Well, let me back up. I think that I always thought they did it because it keeps it from seizing in there. But again, this is a plastic housing, so it's not going to seize in there. So the only other reason I see to put it in there is to ease installation. But that's just my two cents. You could hammer this in if you wanted to. I have a big press here, so I'm going to use that. Let's see, my work area is as clean as usual. All right, and our seal is installed. Now we need to coat the exterior of our pickup tube and this stuff, gasket sealing compound. You need to push the little side tabs in while you push this down. Um, sometimes that'll fly right in, fall right in. Sometimes it doesn't, and it's not. So we can get in there with a the toothbrush, kind of force the sides in. And we're good. The O-ring. Say to coat it in Evernerd sealant M. Gasket and sealant M. We don't have any M. I don't plan on buying any M. So I'm going to use Permatex number two as a substitute. Alright, if you ask me, that's nice and coated. Put that on like so. So the impeller, little bearing cup, or housing cup, shouldn't have been pre-installed. There it is sitting in there. I don't know what that's about, but you're supposed to coat the exterior of the thing in the gasket and sealing compound. Mine's already in there, so obviously I ain't doing that, mainly because I can't get it back out. All right, here's my freshly painted gear case. Let's get this tape off here. Now, we already cleaned up the gasket surfaces. Kind of. So I'm not going to worry about making them cleaner. I'm just going to wash them down with some acetone. Alright, let's get the drive shaft in. First, let's get some grease on the uh, lip seals here. Did I already do this? Probably. Do I remember doing it? No. So, rather than figuring out later on what I forgot to do, let's do it now. I should have done that before I uh, acetone down the surface, but, you know, what are you going to do? Let's get the drive shaft in. Now I'm going to use some of this aviation former gasket stuff. Again, you're supposed to use a uh, sealant M here. I just don't have any, slash want to get some. Um, notable thing, the reason I'm not using the Permatex 2 here 
Permatex 2 is non-hardening. I don't want to find out that this stuff is going to wash away and then I stop pumping water. So I'm going to use the other stuff. Why did I do it on the O-ring? Because I think it's uh, the O-ring is going to do its sealing job. Now you may be wondering why I'm uh, getting it into the screw holes there. That is because right in the bottle it says to use the screw holes. So I'm guessing we're okay there too. We're going to let this sit here for a few minutes and uh, dry and tack up a little bit. All right, just so you know, part number goes down. I might save you some time later, so a little pro tip. Looks like that made a nice good seal. So I'm going to use some of this Lucas assembly lube. I didn't really have any luck with it last time because it didn't stick. But we're going we're gonna to give it a try again. I don't want to use grease here, but uh, I'll see what happens. It looks like it's sticking. Yeah, it'll be okay, right? All right, now it's recommended to install the water pump into the housing and then slide the housing on. I don't know if I like that idea. So I'm going to try it my way and see what happens. And by my way, I mean every way I've ever installed a water pump previously. I don't want to sit there and try to fight with this pin while putting that on, the housing in the way, so this should do okay. I'm going to get some oil out of my little cup. I'm going to coat the inside of the other cup. Alright, so... Here is what I've noticed as time goes on. Sometimes the base of this, being all this, doesn't form a good seal to the plate of the uh, pillar housing there. So what I've done in the past, which has worked out, is just do a thin line of RTV around here. Um, this is most, most of the time it's been affected when it's been a problem is 20 horsepower and lower. Old 50s, 60s, 70s motors. Um, I work on a lot of 5.5 and 6 horsepower engines and if I, if I found personally if I don't seal the power housing plate it ain't gonna pump water. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some RTV and do that. Now again, are you supposed to do this? Not at all. Should you do this? Probably not. Am I doing this? Yes. Nice thin coat. Should do nicely. Alright. I am going installing the seal now. Seal. Housing it over the drive shaft. So what I'm going to do is rotate the drive shaft while turning this down and putting itself on like so. Now we'll go get the screws. Each screw will be coated in this stuff. So, let's see now. Alright, our uh, kit came with a new O-ring for the drive shaft, which after I was done rebuilding the gear case, I was kicking myself because I forgot to order that stupid O-ring and thought it was going to hold up my assembly for another week. But apparently they come with it. Um, they don't in the six horsepowers. Maybe that's something they do now. I don't know, but thankfully it came with it. So we'll rotate it clockwise. We got no binding or issues. So I uh, say this is a pretty successful water pump install. One of the last things we need to do here to our uh, lower unit is to grease up the splines of the drive shaft. Now, if you didn't buy an Evinrude water pump kit, um, you wouldn't have gotten this little packet of Molly Lube. Let me uh, see if I can't zoom in so you can see the part number. Yeah, there you go. Anywho, you could use uh, grease. The only thing you need to do here is make sure you don't get any on top of the drive shaft. You only want to get it on the sides. 
Reason being, it's a pretty close fit when you go to put this stuff in there. If you get a bunch of grease on the top, it ain't gonna go in. Well, it might, but it might crush some things or break something. But so anyway, just don't get any on the top. Let's just leave it at that. So pretty easy to do. Then you just kind of smear it around with your fingers. It's probably too much, but you know, whatever. Won't hurt nothing. Just protect the O-ring, right? So apparently I uh, didn't do this when I was uh, putting the body back together. But I need to tap these six screws for the lower unit. For that I'm going to be using my tap sockets. My quarter inch wrench between each hole there. I will be re-oiling the tap and cleaning the splines of it with my toothbrush. So, you won't see any of that, but I'll be doing it. To use installation, I'm going to run a tap down the uh, tilt pin here, or the tilt rod connector. That should allow the screw to go right back in. So I have the shift rod connector on the lower unit pulled up. Now we need to shift the re this into forward to get the rod down a little bit. That'll help us uh, get the lower in there. So I've already cleaned up the hardware, including the uh, shift rod connector screw. I'm going to have some gasket sealing compound up at my uh, side here ready to go. And I'm going to put a little bit on the shift rod screw and a little bit well, enough on one bolt of the lower unit, and then I'll get the rest on, or I'll get the rest uh, coated before I put them on. All right, I got the gear case. Now, when you do this, you need to align the splines, shift rod connector, and the water tube all at the same time. So keep that in mind. The water tube and shift rod connector apparently kind of go at the same time. I'll drop the screw in. So the screw gave me a little bit of trouble at first, and then it went straight down. So I don't know why that happened. Now do again I want to make sure your water tube is lined up but it kind of feels like it's in there so I turn the flywheel a little bit there that align align the splines on the drive shaft Played with the shifter, and the whole thing kind of slid together. Now I'll get a screw in to hold it. Now we'll dip the rest of the screws in the gasket sealing compound and go around and put them all in. All right, gear case is installed. Everything's tightened down. So now we need to check for smooth operation. Flywheel still rotates as usual. The uh, filler shaft is spinning right now, which is odd because it should have been in neutral, but now it's in reverse. 
All right, neutral now, and forward. So I'll have a little bit of shifting to do there because there's a hair trigger between uh, forward. But if you remember, that's why we didn't put the cotter pin in on this rod down here. See this rod? That's our shifter adjust knob. So when I move this, this whole thing kind of moves around. This is going to need to go really that way a few turns, but we'll worry about that later. So now we need to top off the fluids just for, uh, I don't know, just so you know, I guess. That's what I'm looking for. You should pressure test this now, pressure and vacuum test it to make sure there's no leaks. I do have a way to do it using a rigged up uh, bike pump and a rigged up gauge and then a rigged up siphon pump for the vacuum tests. I'm going to make a video of doing one of these later when I get the actual tools to do it instead of something rigged up. So let's just hope it doesn't leak for now. Gear case, we're going to need one of these vacuum pumps and some gear oil. Now there may still be some uh, fluid coming out of here when I remove these, just because of the fluid we, or the oil we put it in it when we uh, rebuilt it, pre-sealed it, whatever. Um, this doesn't use the Phillips anymore, or the flathead rather. This now has Allen screws, so I have a Allen bit on the end of my extension, and I'll use a uh, ratchet with a little bit of force to put them in when the time comes. Now what we need to do is open up our bottle of gear lube and put our pump on. Now I'll screw the fitting into the gear case. Now what you do here is you pump it until you see fluid coming out the uh, vent up here in the top. So you're going to want to have your uh, tool and screw ready. So now I'll just start pumping. Now I'll get a rag and wipe off the, uh, the oil. Bottom one, I want to be a little on the quick side. Also, keep in mind, I have the uh, vent screw in. If that wasn't in, this stuff would go gushing out of here. Now I'll tighten these down a little. You don't want to overdo it though either. It's kind of good and snug, but not to the point to where you're going to strip them or never get them back off. So in case you were wondering, there was a minute of pumping in order to fill it. So to extend the life of the pump, you're going to pump the excess back into its little bottle here. You won't get it all out of the tube, but get most of it. In case you're wondering how much of this bottle I used, I think it was right up here to the uh, 900 or the 26. I don't know, it was around there somewhere. Anyway, so I didn't use much, so I got plenty left over for another motor. Another small motor anyway. The big V4 and V6 is they use an entire bottle on their own. Well, that does it for this installment of the uh, 15 horsepower. Also, I don't know if I say Johnson or Evinrude. This thing was a Johnson. Now that I'm making it this metallic blue, it's technically now an Evinru, but it's 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 still a Johnson. Anyway, so that concludes this video. Um, not much to do now. We got to put a prop on, a couple of top end stuff, and then we can test start it. So if you got any questions about this, let me know.